Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, today I'm joined with my friend Stephanie from Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening, who's also one of the sponsors or participating channelers of this challenge. And if she freezes up, guys, she's in a hotel. So we all know what that's like. So good thing I have the gift of the gap because I, <laughs> I can just keep talking if she freezes. <laughs> so but before we get into what Stephanie's got going on, I'm just going to quickly go ahead and show you guys day 17 of the challenge because we are getting towards the end of the challenge. We're over the halfway hump. Of course, um, Thursday today, you're kind of coming off of a crazy day yesterday where you were going through the Kuan Yin stuff the day before yesterday, getting in our yesterday, getting into the Kuan Yin stuff to really start to work through childhood trauma. Today, you're kind of recovering from that, the 17th. You've got, again, the bar or the half primary series with Ashtanga Nurse, the Om Meditation. And, of course, today, if you feel very overwhelmed from the work you did yesterday, please make sure to take a little extra time to maybe do some sample healing as well um, and journal more about the feelings that are coming up. So for Friday, November 18th, coming up, your halfway point, you didn't come this far to only come this far, start making your bed up. Um, if you uh, if you were doing like your last meal between be, be between five and seven p.m. We've been speaking about that a lot. Why that is? Give your digestive system at least tweet twelve hours to rest. And then today you can do kickboxing again or half primary series with Ashtanga Nurse on meditation, food journal. And then today for Friday you're going to be journaling our tomorrow for Friday. You're going to be journaling about betrayal. This is another big one. So a couple of days ago, you went through childhood trauma. Now you're going to be journaling and looking at what betrayal is. What is betrayal? Can you think back to one time in your life where you were betrayed? Who betrayed you? What happened? How did it affect you going forward? Do you still hold resentment, anger, or hurt over the betrayal? Where have you betrayed yourself? That's a big one. In your journal, write a letter to the person who betrayed you. Then in that letter, tell that person you forgive him or her. Take a moment to close your eyes, take a deep breath, and then let the breath go. In this letter, tell the person that you wish the best for him or her. If you wish to tell them that you let them go, go ahead and do so. It is up to you if you want to keep him or her in your life. The most important thing is for you to, to work on you is forgiving that person who hurt you. This is not for them, but for you. In the last few days have been emotionally challenging. That's okay. Shadow work is not easy. Take a moment to add extra, to add any extra thoughts you're having. Have you been more emotional? Have you felt anger coming up? If you felt anger coming up, don't fight it. Let it come up. The most important thing to note, though, is that you do not project that anger onto anyone else. If you need to grab a pillow and go sit in your car and scream into a pillow, you can. If you decide to do this exercise, please journal about the experience. And then, of course, you have the option for the Friday night oil bath leading into your Saturday um, rest day, which we'll get into tomorrow. And so now let's hand the mic over to Stephanie, who's got a lot of stuff going on. So tell us what's going on, Stephanie. Hey. Hey, hey. <laughs> um, so I posted a video yesterday on some new stuff that is going on on my, um, my website for service. Is. So as of the 12th of November, so the interesting number on that is it's literally 111222. I was certified in Reiki, um, one and two. So I am now considered uh, to be a practitioner in the Reiki healing. And so I am in the works of adding that to my services on my website. I'm still, my website is still under construction as I'm putting in the basic Reiki, which was because I want to do an initial with, you know, new people that I'm doing Reiki on, which is like a 90 minute um, where I'm going over questions with that person. And, you know, you know I need to, there's, there's certain things, it's almost like going to a doctor's appointment, but I'm not a doctor. But it's it's kind of similar in the concept is there's, there's going to be questions I have for that person. Um, so I'm just going to go over some of the new stuff that I'm offering. Good news is my 30 and 60 minute basic card readings are open as of January. So you can go check that out if you're interested. You can, um, I need to adjust the days ahead of time that you can book because it only allows me to have people book like defaulted. It's 60 days, but I can change that. So I got to go back in. Oops, did I? I froze. Sorry. Okay. Um, 
So I'm going to share a screen here. All right. So I'm uh, working on my 30 minute Reiki session. So that's just going to be basic Reiki. Um, I have my shadow work readings that will. So right now I'm, I'm booking people through signal through the signal group until the end of the year. After January, I'm still keeping the 25% off prices for when you, Bryce, you do the next part of the challenge, which will be January, correct? Yep. So I'm going to keep those in yep. here. So in order to do shadow work reading, you do have to be part of the challenge. Um, I also have a couple's tarot reading that was inspired by a friend of mine um, that um, actually I just did their reading today, <laughs> which is really cute. So I want to be very, very careful how I word this. This reading is for those who have strong bonds with their spouses or significant other. If you're in an abusive relationship, this is not a reading for you. That's a one-on-one -on -one reading. I'm not going to deal with uh, a, a narcissist uh, in, in an empath all in the same Zoomy. So you would want to meet with me one-on-one. -on -one. So this is more or less for soulmates and stuff like that that just need a little bit of clarity. And it's really going to pull up childhood wounds to help strengthen the relationship, if that makes sense at all. Now, can I ask? So it's kind of like a shadow work reading. But can I, yeah. like, if we look at couples tarot card reading, could it be like siblings that do it together too, or friends that want to do a reading together? Does it have to be exclusively romantically involved people? Yes, because it's, it's, it's actually a shadow work reading okay. for specific couples because it's bringing up the inner childhood stuff where it's bringing a lot of, you know when couples can be really, really close with one another, yeah. but sometimes that the inner childhood wounds really can affect the relationship if they're not healed. Yeah. And sometimes like in yoga, we have blind spots where we can't see maybe what that is. So that's specifically to strengthen relationship through intuitive reading through it, it's a shadow work reading just for couples. In other words. Okay. Um, I have Reiki for animals. And what that will entail is I will meet with the fur baby's owner or, or mom or dad. I don't like to say owner because it sounds like an enslavement of the animal. But I will meet with um, the um, animal's family or mom or dad, whoever. On Zoom, we're going to discuss what's going on with them. It could be a horse, it could be a dog, it could be a cat, it could be a bird, it doesn't really matter. It could be a freaking dinosaur, okay? It could be an elephant, whatever. Animal's an animal. And then we'll discuss things, and then I will set um, a time period when I will administer the Reiki healing for animals. Animals take Reiki really, really quickly, so it doesn't really take that long. Um, I'm also doing a seven chakra tarot read Reiki package. This is like the big kahuna. This is a 90-minute session where it's literally one chakra at a time. I'm doing the uh, Reiki plus I'm doing the card reading on that particular chakra. And I'm going to do a before and after reading on each chakra to see uh -huh. what spirit guides want to bring through, you know, what is in the root chakra? Is there any kind of trauma that specifically needs to be shown to the person, right? Like for instance, even in the, the pineal gland, let's say someone's intuitive, but they're not doing the shadow work. It might very, very well come up like this person you need to be very careful not to be delusional because you're not doing the inner work. So again, that's kind of like, that's kind of like a shadow work read as well, but with Reiki um, in it. And I kind of consider myself a shadow work reader anyways. So even if you come to me for a basic reading, I talk a lot about shadow work stuff regardless. Yeah. Then we have initial Reiki healing. That's a 90 minute session. Um, just because I will need to go through questions with the person and everything before I go through the Reiki. I still have my courses, um, potions. I just have, I have like six more spots left in that. If anybody wants to sign up, um, beginners medicinal herbal magic workshop. Um, I have actually, hold on. I'm going to get my dates out here. Can you hear me? Okay. Am I, yeah. am yep, I yep. Um, freezing a lot? You're freezing, but it's fine. Okay. It only lasts for a couple seconds. So. Okay. So. My next tarot course, people can sign up for this um, for the 7th of January. Um, I have put 
um, more courses up, but they're not available for booking yet. Um, but the next one will be running from the 7th of January to, to the 28th of January. Those are Saturdays. I made it a little bit easier for people to attend that if you are on a Monday through Friday work schedule. Um, it's going to be the two hours per, um, per day for the course. So a total of eight hours will be for um, that course, okay? Now, um, in here... <clears throat> if I do have people who need to go on a payment plan, all you got to do is mail.com and I will work. Whether it's you, you froze. So say that again, say that email address again, 50 or something. Great. You're freezing. Tear away. Yep. Can you hold on? Breaking up. Yeah. So we missed the email address. So what she's saying, guys, is is you can have people hold on. If people need to go on a payment plan, she can put you on a payment plan. You just have to email her at Yeah. You just have to ask. And I'll, send, I'll send me the email, Stephanie, and I'll put it in the description box okay. below. Below. And okay. can I ask so can I ask you a question too, uh, Stephanie? So what if Sorry. somebody's watching us right now and they're and they're thinking, gosh, one of these readings or these courses would be a really great Christmas present for my girlfriend or my kid or my can they can someone book for you? Will you give them like a gift card or something to like join? Yep. So if if that's the case, what they want to do is they actually would probably want to um, book the course. And then I'm trying to think of the best way to do this because it in so can you hear me okay? Yeah, you just cut out there for a second. So say okay. that. So, if, so, so again, what we're saying, guys, if you want to, so let's say your girlfriend is like super so if um yeah so if someone is interested i would email me for a gift certificate um i'm tr trying to think there's no way i can do gift certificates on this website unless i literally set up gift certificate but i can set up gift certificates on apple apple pay so on apple square and all am i still freezing yeah, that's okay, because I'm considering offering that, you know, for the next yoga course that's going to start in January. And all I'm going to do is if someone wants to purchase a yoga course for their loved one, they'll just email me and I'll just send them a piece of paper with all the information to give their loved one. So it's super easy, guys, because Stephanie and I are both small businesses, so we're not going through any type of corporation or anything like that. If you want to buy, uh, let's say your girlfriend is really interested in tarot cards, and so you think a great Christmas present would be to buy her a spot in Stephanie's tarot card reading course for beginners, you just email Stephanie and you can work it out between the two of you so that she can send you something so that your girlfriend has something to oh, to unwrap on Christmas Day. Um, let's see, guys. Sorry, there's some internet issues happening. Now we got two Stephanies. Oh, I signed off on the other one, didn't I? It's still up on my screen. I don't know, you guys, like... Hold on. I, the chaos of everything. I don't know why it's still up because I'm I'm live. Right, it's off now. It's off now. Okay. This is clear. This is better. So what I was saying, guys. So yes, yeah, Stephanie, I don't know if you heard that. Stephanie and I are both small businesses. We're not corporations. So if you want to purchase, so if your girlfriend's really into tarot cards and you think, oh my God, this would be a great Christmas present to buy her a spot in Stephanie's course, just email <laughs> Stephanie and you can work it out with her and she can send you something, a printout of something. So your girlfriend has something to unwrap to see it. Now say your email address again, Stephanie, now that you're on a different, different device. So great awakening, like the great awakening. Uh -huh. and and tarot so great awakening tarot at gmail.com and i'll put that in the description box too as well guys yeah yeah what's something that's something you've learned on this journey right stephanie that in the spiritual world we're always working with people aren't we too yeah. yeah we're always working with people when it comes to paying for courses and all that kind of stuff so don't ever i want to express that too because i know i've got a few people in my yoga course who are on payment plans totally fine that's totally mm -hmm. fine you know you don't have to be a millionaire 
to take these courses, we will work with you. Um, all people will, and I think you've learned that too, because you're so used to the corporate corporate world, right, Stephanie, or the medical world where it's so like cold almost, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, you know, I've had to ask for help for doing courses before, actually recently. So yeah, scared to death to even ask, but I, I did it. I had no choice. So there's no way. Um, so it's it's definitely a different world when you're working with people that are not in the corporate world that they, they want, they want to help more than it's about the money. So, yeah, and I'm, I mean, obviously I need to pay my bills. That's, so that's why I charge as much as I do. I have to pay my bills and it's the exchange of the energy, but at the same time, I want people to also realize that I enjoy doing this and I enjoy teaching these courses and if people are benefiting from them, that makes my heart happy. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not just about getting a paycheck. It's, it's really about, I, I have passion in what I do and to share that passion with others and help them and guide them through, um, is also part of it too. Yeah. And I'm going to reiterate that because I know for me, I'm in the 16 years that I've been in the yoga world, it's like you'll see on Reddit and all these places used to piss me off where people think that like yoga teachers should be offering their services for free. Well, let me just reiterate this because yes, um, we love what we do. I love what I do. I love it. However, I still have to pay the rent and pay for electricity and pay for food. And so if we did it for free, we wouldn't be able to do it because we would have to go get another job and that would not give us the energy to do it. And so the prices that are, are it's literally to keep a roof over, it's an exchange of energy. But with that being said, with that being said, we're always willing to work with people because it really is about, I, mean, I have to pay my teachers in India and people mis misunderstand. They say, oh, you know, Krishmacharya, he didn't charge some of his students. The students he didn't charge lived with him and had to be his servant. They had to clean his house. They had to go to the grocery store and go shopping for him. They had to do his laundry. So there was an exchange of energy. Absolutely. So even though some of his students weren't paying in money, they were paying in their labor. So they're absolutely, I mean, I, I have to pay my teacher in India. So it is an exchange of energy. Unfortunately, that's the world we live in where we're in the, we're in the matrix. I hope one day we go back to more bartering. We're a more in a barter system anyway. I see that anyways. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've bartered with people with, with readings. Yeah. You know, I've done that before, um, for Reiki healings and such. So, I mean, that's also a great way to do things. Um, but yeah, it's like, I have a ton of bills I got to pay. So, you know, it's, yeah. it's just those things where I don't, it, it, in the beginning it was like, well, how can I be creative to earn some sort of money rather than go back to the medical field where I'm absolutely miserable. At least I love what I do now. I'm passionate about what I do. It's not for me, you know, I mean, yes, it's work. It's it's what I do for work, but there's a passion behind it. It's not, I'm enjoying the work, you know, it's not, I'm not miserable. Yeah. 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 That's, I, I'm the same way. You know, I have, we have our Emmy, well, Emmy is going to be doing the Reiki portion of our yoga course coming up on Sunday. And I'm so excited because I'm a hard teacher. Stephanie knows I'm a hard teacher. <laughs> Don't even get me started on that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also, I also, I know I'm a really good teacher. And my, here in Atlanta, my court, and I'm not saying that, I don't, I don't want to sound arrogant saying that's, I just know that's what I'm supposed to be doing as part of my Dharma because I understand it. And, um, and, and I, and, and for females too, I will say, I said this to you, Stephanie, for, for females, I find this, that females have to be a little bit tougher than males sometimes because the traditional yoga world is a very male dominated world. And so, um, in order to be almost taken seriously, you have to kind of prove yourself even, even more as a female and, and that's okay. You know, it's I'm the only female at this point authorized in the state of Georgia to do this. That came through sweat. When I say sweat, blood and tears, now that you're in the Ashtanga practice, am I being serious, Stephanie, when I say sweat, blood and tears? I have bruises all over me. I have scratches all over me from being adjusted and, and doing the practice. I've never had so many bruises on, on me. Um, yeah. No, a lot and i i just don't cry a lot I, whatever that's from you cut out there for a second steph so you cut out after you said i have bruises all over me 
So as far as crying goes, I can't even begin to tell you how much you cry. You're purging. I have cried and I have cried and I have cried and I am tired and I am beat up. It's exhausting. It's because everything's coming out and you're being literally put through. I often see it as like putting yourself in like the washing machine. You know how the washing machine like shakes the clothes up and cleans it and it's kind of rough with the clothes. It's kind of what's happening to you. It's everything's being unstuck. Everything's being kind of shaken up and coming to the surface and the bruising too. So I don't know, Stephanie, have you ever done cupping before? I know what it is, but no, I haven't. I used to do cupping all the time. Cupping is is, is this um, is part of uh, Chinese medicine as well as some Ayurvedic medicine. So what cupping does is they they find places in your body where there's where there's some tension and some stuck blood. And as the Chinese doctor who used to do it to me, he would say, you know, it's like you have a traffic jam with the blood over like a tight area and then it can't move. So it gets stuck. So what the cupping does is it comes and it pulls the old blood up. And then so the new blood can come in and heal. Well, what happens with the cupping is you end up with these gnar after you're done, you have these gnarly just bruises. They look like hickeys all over your body from the cupping. And so what happens in yoga is kind of the same thing when you get bruised in yoga. Half of the time, it's not a bruise because you were knocked. It's a bruise because old blood is being lifted out of the fascia. So that yeah, it's, not, it's not a bruise where I like bumped myself. It doesn't even, they don't really even hurt that much. It's just literally like a discoloration under the skin. And I mean, it's gnarly looking at times. It's, I have one on my inner thigh that's like huge. Yeah, it's new bloods coming in and, and, and healing the area. And the physical body is the expression of the soul. I mean, Stephanie, we talked about this last night. And this is where kind of the ego death comes in. Because even though the physical body is the expression of the soul, it's not the soul. And so it's just this like jungle gem of obstacles that your soul actually picked. You know, it's like when you go to college. I want to flip the bird at my soul right now. I mean, when you go to college, you have to kind of pick your classes, right? And then you have to petition to graduate. That's kind of what's happening. Like your soul sits down before it takes the incarnation and sits down with your higher ups and says, what, what do you need? What, what are you carrying over to the next from the next life? What do you need to work on? What's your karma? And so you, you create this, this beautifully designed avatar that's going to have a nervous system that's going to have you experience. And on top of that, though, you're not going to remember that this was your doing. And mm. when you start to accept that and remember it's your doing, then you kind of take your power back and you go, you know what? I mean, I talked about this with Emmy yesterday. You can either deal with this shit now or you can deal with it in the next life. Um, I was doing the reading for a couple weeks from now for the Sophia Code, and I was talking about uh, Dr. Uh, Brian Weiss, who... Um, you might like his book, Stephanie, actually. he. Um, I So I grew up with a grandmother who believed in reincarnation, my dad's mom. Even though she played the piano and the organ at the church on Sunday, she had her books on reincarnation. She would talk to us about it as kids. So reincarnation was not a foreign subject to me when I got into college. But when I got into college, I started to kind of question life a little bit. And I started to read these books on reincarnation. And I read Dr. Brian Weiss's books. And um, he is a hypnotherapist, a psychiatrist who learned hypnotherapy to try to help people with like smoking, like stuff like that. And it, he stumbled upon past lives accidentally when um, he his patients would go under hypnotherapy and they would start talking about past lives. And the issue was coming forward from the past life. And once they worked through it, it released their issue. And one of the books he wrote, though, is he started learning how to tap into future lives. And so he would have his patients under hypnotherapy look at all the options they had for future lives and all the options of these future lives depended on what they accomplished in this life. And so if the patient or the person did not deal with their karma in this life, it was going to double up on the next life and it was going to be a hard life. But if they did their work in this life, I remember one person, like the next life, if they did their work in this life, the next life meant they were going to live. They saw themselves living on the Island of Hawaii with abundant money, great family. But the other option, if they didn't work on themselves, was like drug addict on the streets. So it showed the patient like, okay, you can you can neglect this in this life. But if you do, you're going to be going in the harder direction the next life. It's not going anywhere. But if you work through it, 
there's an easier path coming for you. Let me tell you, I better be on the Hawaiian Isle with abundance of money. <laughs> Because I'm choosing to work through it right now. So, yeah. Just saying. Yeah. So, so just, just please bring me there, please. You just got to break through. It. And that's, and that's what, and I, and I, I talked about that in that reading, which I'm editing still for a couple weeks from now. But I, I was like, this reminds me of this book. And so, if you guys look under Brian Weiss, Dr. Brian Weiss, his books are incredible. He actually gives a lot of lectures now. And he even talks about how when he started doing this work on patients, it changed him spiritually as well. Like he started having, when he speaks now, he has a very like calm, when you listen to his lectures, he's very calm. He's very peaceful with life because he, you know, grew up growing up Jewish, like we grew up Christian. This shit wasn't talked about, even though it was in the original teachings. So he like, you know, if you grew up Christian, a lot of the Jewish pe people also grew up this whole idea, like you got this one life and that's it. It's a very daunting idea. Yeah. But when you realize that, no, it's always just a game of you knowing yourself. That's all it is. You start to kind of get more peaceful about it. And so, so yeah, you guys, and I keep the people in our challenge right now. I mean, Stephanie, I'm just so shocked at how many people are actually doing this. Aren't you? Well, not just doing it because part of me was, at the beginning was like, okay, people can say they're going to do it, but are they going to do it? Because it's free. Yeah. So not like you're paying for personal oh. helper. Yeah. But what I'm seeing is I can't tell you how many comments of people like, Oh, I went to the store today and my jeans are falling off oh. or, um, I went down a bra size. Like I just like, and it's not even just weight things. It's like literally people are being vulnerable in the chat to kind of express their experiences, which I appreciate because that honesty through that vulnerability stage is like going to help the next person out. Right. So that's why I'm open about a lot of my issues because if it can help another person relate to me and what I'm going through and that would help the next person, then great. And you probably can understand that too, because you're quite open about stuff in your life as well. Um, but it's amazing to see the effort people are putting in. They're not just doing the challenge. They're actually challenging themselves with even more. Mm -hmm. So yeah. people will say, oh, I had a choice between, what is it, bar and ashtanga, but I did both. Or I didn't just do a five-minute cold shower. I did a 10-minute cold shower. I <laughs> I'm like, do you I guys have that one? Because I can't do more than like three to four minutes. <laughs> I told you guys, like everyone's like, I don't know if I can do the, I'm like, listen, that that's just life-changing. I a baby when it comes to the cold too like i don't even know how to do we i mean we were laughing we got hit with some cold weather in atlanta from the hurricane and that's last sunday we i was at the grocery store at the in the convenience store at the gas station and the news was on and they were like laughing on the news because they're like we don't know what to do we don't know what to do like, like it was like everything was shutting down because it was cold so i'm in an area of the world where we're just not equipped and i when i started doing cold therapy and the benefits that started happening it's a very spiritual experience as well when you're having to lead into such an intense reaction from your nervous system and yeah i was shocked people in the chat were saying yeah i'm doing 10 minutes of a cold shower now and i didn't ask for 10 minutes i just said five minutes and people are and people are saying how much of a benefit they're finding from that cold shower oh. There's also, I'm finding a lot of people are getting the clarity about what this, it's not just doing a shadow work challenge. Like there's a lot of clarity now on what it truly means and what it's truly doing to you spiritually, emotionally, and physically. And even though it's hard, I think people are starting to get those aha moments. Yeah. Like, holy shit. Why didn't I know this sooner? I can't tell you how many times I saw that in the comments. There's a couple people that I actually had known from doing private readings and I'm not going to ever put names out there, but those in, in, you know, I had said to them, are you doing this challenge? And they're like, no. And I'm like, just do it. Just do it. Please just do it. And they did. And some of the comments coming from them, I'm like, that's awesome. That's really, really awesome. Cause it's like, you're really, really leaning into this. And I have no words to say how proud of everyone I am because I'm going through my own hell rip myself right now. 
So I get it. I'm, I'm right there with everybody on that challenge. I'm not doing the challenge verbatim, like how it's set up because I've been on this journey from since March, yeah. but, but I'm still, I'm, a, I'm, I'm empathizing because it's like, and, and I just got Reiki attuned. So my body is acclimating to the energies and there's its own detox with attunements when you get Reiki attuned. So going through the yoga practice with an actual teacher who is adjusting me and wringing out the wet clothing, you know, that my organs mm -hmm. with the adjustments plus the Reiki attunement, I asked for a double whammy. Apparently my soul wanted the double whammy. The, the double Whopper burger, okay? Not the not the thin patty, the really thick patties with the gooey, ooey cheese on it. Why? I don't know. But it is what it is. It's just what it is. I think I know why. So I'm going through my own version of the underworld, my own version of hell. What did I say to you this morning? I said, yeah, I'm in the eternal hell, fire of hell right now. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I think that's what the fire of hell, when they say eternal fires of hell in, in church, that's like the metaphor of pretty much the shadow work. I really think if you want to really break it down, but, um, and what, what they're actually talking about in the Christian faith from like the high controllers. Cause they know, they know. Um, but it's like seeing everybody go through their own version of hell, but still doing it is so amazing. And well, I I think that's been the biggest revelation. I know probably for, I mean, like I said, I've been on this road for a very long time. And so I forget how, and I've, I've kind of told you some memories I have of in the beginning when I first registered some stuff, but it's like when you realize that pain isn't only necessary, but inevitable and you have to work through it, it gives you a different perspective of, because how many people, Stephanie, start to ex any type of exercise all exercise really is shadow work if you allow it to be shadow work if you allow it to, if you allow your body to talk to you but how many people do you know stephanie get a little bit uncomfortable with exercise they pull a hamstring or they have a little bit of a back ache and they just quit oh that's that's very common it's very very common but i'm not really seeing any of that in this no in this because i think people got it i think that was the biggest aha moment was like oh yeah. My body, even though my body and my soul are not necessarily the same thing, because my body is just the expression of my soul, all physical pain is, is a manifestation of thought and attachment. And so if I, if I neglect the thought and attachment, the pain is going to continue to be there. But if I work through the pain and I ask the pain to talk to me, then the thought, and because the body and the mind will work together. The body is the mind field. And mm -hmm. so you work together. So you change the patterns in the body. You eventually shift the patterns in the mind. You shift the patterns in the mind. You change the patterns in the body. There was a book a while ago, like years ago, called Think Yourself Thin. And so many people laughed at that book. But now looking back, whoever wrote that book understood the power of the mind. Think Yourself Thin. Because your body's a representation of your mind. Now, I want to talk to Stephanie about, because we have so many people getting stronger and they're losing weight. And they I, I asked at the, at the halfway point, I put the same exercise that I did on the first day so people could kind of gauge how much stronger they've gotten from their first time do it until two weeks into it. And we spoke about this. And I kind of mentioned this on some videos. The Hathors speak about this in the Hathor material. And this is why so many old spiritual practices like the priest and priesthood of Isis, yoga, all these spiritual practices had intense exercise programs in them. Why is that? Because when the vibration of the soul gets higher, the, if the body's not strong enough, if the muscles aren't toned enough, it can't hold that vibration. And that made so much sense to me when the half, I don't know if I've said that to you, I've told you about the half or saying that. It's mm -hmm. like if you have a really weak, like thin glass jar and it breaks easily when you put stuff in it. But if you have a sturdy jar and you put a powerful liquid in it, it's not going to break. And so the Hathors explain that in this book. They say from from the from Hathor, from Isis and Hathor, that this is the same thing. It's the same Egyptian mystery school. The body has to be physically fit in order for the soul's vibration to rise. Because the body has to hold the soul in this life. And that made so much sense to me. That made so, that's like, I was like, oh, wow, that's common sense. That's yeah. common sense. How can we it, never correlate the two before? It might rattle a few cages, but 
it doesn't mean you can't get there. You know, if exactly. I, I overweight for, I don't know, 15 years on and off. So with me, um, I'm very, uh, I fluctuate and I've been fluctuating. I'll, I'll be 110 pounds and then I'll gain 40 pounds. I'll go back down to 120 pounds, gain another 40 pounds. So I could be a little toothpick or I can be a pleasantly plump little munchkin from munchkin land singing my munchkin tunes. Like it, it, it just depends on what I'm going through in life because I'm an emotional eater, but with the that I'm doing and the eating of foods that benefit my body rather than harm my body through the dosha Ayurvedic ways and practices, I'm not even really that hungry and I'm not emotionally eating. Even, even though I'm going through the ring of fire right now, literally I'm going through my own little fire of hell. Um, I'm not emotionally eating. In fact, I don't even really think about food. I just eat when I need to eat. Sometimes I actually forget to eat, which is unlike me because let me tell you, I am a foodie through and through. When life has me down, I could just munch on a lovely bag of potato chips. That is my thing. That's my jam. Even more so than ice cream, that is my jam. The crunchy, kettle-cooked, salted potato chips. Okay? And if we want to really get fancy then we can get some dip in there too. But that's, but I'm not doing that. In fact, I haven't touched a damn potato chip in about two months now. It's amazing. So, and because I, I can't, it's, it's kappa and I have to eat vata food. So I, like this morning, my I ate an apple with peanut butter and then I had a vegetarian salad with fresh, fresh um, vegetables on it. So instead of putting meat on there and stuff like that, because I love sandwiches, but I don't eat meat anymore. I'm a vegetarian. So you, you get creative. You really get creative. I've been eating a lot of chickpeas. Love those chickpea cheese twizzy things that are not made with potatoes or anything, but they're made with the, the chickpeas. What are they yeah. called? Uh, hippies or whatever. Hippies. Yeah. Yeah. Hippies. Yeah. Yes. So, so guys, and that's what, so when you start to, I feel like, and yeah, it might trigger people by me saying that, but I'm just saying what the Hathors are saying, what the Egyptian mystery schools are saying, and it makes sense. It's common sense. And I'm going to tell you, if you are overweight, so this should be the wake-up call to get your body physically fit to be able to take on a higher vibrational spirituality. You might not ever be a size zero, especially if you're a kappa, but you I can will get to a point where you're a six or an eight and you're physically fit and the same muscles that I have in my body, Stephanie has in her body, the same muscles that our friend, Jamie Soleil, the um, figure skating Olympiad has in her body, you have in your body too. And so it is possible. And if by saying that, if by the half door saying that it triggers you, it only triggers you because you know, it's correct. Well, you we're not even, correct. we're not, we're not necessarily talking about like body shape either. Mm -hmm. So, Obviously, your disposition is going to have a contribution to what you're like. I'm more rounder. I gain weight easy where you are underweight very easily and you're long and lanky. You and very, somebody told me I was sharp. I have sharp edges because I'm so bony. Chiseled face. I, had the, I, had the, I have to. This is this might be TMI, guys. This might be TMI, but I'm all. When am I never not? You you always say TMI. I worry about my hip bones in certain acts sometimes. There's certain intimate acts that I worry my hip bones are actually hurting the other person. Where I am a little bit more voluptuous in those areas. I'm like, what, what would you say? It's like uh, a curvy. Let us say cushion for the pushing. Yeah, I'm a little far on the curvier side. Now, I'm not obese by all means. No, but I'm not at all. You have a cute figure, yeah. But if I mean, I could get I could get obese if I let myself go easily, like absolutely easily. I've never gotten to that point where I've allowed it because you know I, I just can't. Clothing hurts me to begin with because my skin is super sensitive with certain clothing. I'm always in sundresses even in the winter time because I literally hate pants. I hate the way they feel on my waist. I'm, but, always, I'm the same way and I'm, I'm skinny and I always wear sundresses because yeah, it's comfortable. Me and you have a lot of life that way. Actually, me and you have like the same style and clothing. It's funny. Um, it's way, it's, I'm sorry. Blue jeans are only for special dates. 
Yes, I don't do blue jeans very often. Um, I brought them with me on this trip and then it got really, really cold. So I ended up wearing them. However, I actually had room in them. So I've dropped, what do you think I would drop? You haven't seen me too, too often on this trip. I've yeah. dropped probably between five and 10 pounds since being here. I'll, I'll see you more next week. And I've been doing that, guys. I've been intentionally, like, she only she's only staying, like, 20 minutes up the road from me. But I've been intentionally allowing Stephanie. I've said this before, but it's super important. When we get into the artful dodger, that's what, that's what David Gree used to call the ego. Because the ego works in very weird ways when it knows it's being challenged. And so it will, like, do things to, like, so, so like, if you are in the shadow work process and all of a sudden all you want to do is go hang out with your friend. That's your ego trying to avoid feeling the feelings that the work is bringing up. And so I know that as someone who's been, so I've been giving Stephanie her space to allow her body and her psyche to process everything coming up for her in this moment. But I'm going to see her more next week because we've got a holiday next week. But, um, but yeah, guys, so that's something to important to bring up too. Also, I want to tell, I, I said this on a video and I meant to tell you this last night, Stephanie as well. And Ram Das writes about this as well as Bhagavan Das writes about this. They both have the same teeth teacher in India named Kroli Baba right before the ego takes like a uh, arrow to the heart like right before it really starts to die it rages so all the I, that yesterday yeah it will rage. I, I that and yelled at God I, I don't yell at God I don't get mad at God I never blame God for anything I've never been one that's like oh this person died in my life. I'm so pissed off at God. I've never been that person. But last night, what did I text you? I said, I fucking feel like God hates me right now. I felt so abandoned by God yesterday because I had another situation arise that had to do with, again, my fear of finances. So I, I flipped the fuck out. I got in the bathtub had my salt bath. And I literally said, God, if you want me on this trip, if you want me doing what I'm doing, you have to provide a miracle for me because I am no longer going to, I set my rules. And so God proved me wrong and miracles happened. Well, and that's what happens though. I, and I told you, I was, I, I tried and I was telling you last night, I was like, cause I was trying to talk you off the ledge last night. There's going to come a point years from now where you're going to be talking someone else off the ledge. Cause the same, I was telling, I was, I was like, Stephanie, this say, I was like, you're not alone. You're not alone. This happens to everybody on the path. You're not being singled out. You're not being excluded. And I told you after, after we calmed down, I said, my first trip to India, I went to my bank, which was SunTrust Bank at the time, which is truest now. And I told them specifically to put in my file that I was going to be in India for like four months. And I knew that because I'd gone to school in the United Kingdom. And so I knew I had to tell the bank because I didn't want them shutting my card off thinking someone had stolen my card because that would happen to me in England a lot. But in the, in Europe, it was easier to deal with than I knew it was going to be dealing with it in India. Well, like three months into my trip, all of a sudden, all of my cards got shut off. And the only way I could contact my bank was through email because I could not call them. And what had happened was that was when they were putting the chips in the cards. Remember our debit cards used to not have chips in them. That was just a stripe. Well, they were starting to mail out new cards with chips in it. So they were shutting everybody's cards off. But I had specifically told them at the bank to put in my files that I was going to be out of the country for a certain amount of time. And all they, SunTrust was so fucking rude they would not help me over email. They just kept saying, oh, well, you need a chip in your card. Well, I'm in fucking Mysore, India, four hours away from Bangalore. How the fuck am I supposed to get a new card here? I had no access to any of my money. And that's the most frustrating thing is when you're looking at your banking account and you can see money in it, but you have no way to get it out. No way to use it. And so I was praying. I called my parents. They had to Western Union me money, but then I was nervous because sometimes in India, they run out of notes, money notes. And so I was like, dear God, Ganesha, Shiva, whoever's listening, like whoever's on call right now, like whatever, I let there be some, and thank God there, wa there was some, there was some notes at the Western Union. So I was able to have cash on me, but then even flying back. 
I had to fly to Dallas first. And when I was in Dallas, I had to change over to a domestic flight. And so I had to recheck my baggage in. But I didn't have any cards that worked. And I didn't have any United States US money on me. And so I had to call my mother from Dallas, Texas to have her Western Union like $100 over to the airport in Dallas so I could recheck my luggage in. And I went to, and I mean, it was one of the most stressful situations I'd ever been in in my life because I literally had no access to anything in the middle of India in the, as a white girl in the middle. And I'm not, I'm not trying to sound racist about that, but I'm a target. If you know, when you're in a country where like I'm in Europe, it's easier because as a, as a white person, you can kind of blend in, but you stand out. And so I, I was screwed. I mean, the good thing is, is I had friends there as well. So I knew that if I, if I really was in trouble, I could just go to my teacher or go to some friends and see like, if there was a way that I could have, I mean, one, it happened to one of my friends as well. One of my Canadian friends where their cards got shut off and all they did were able, they, they transferred some of their money to another Canadian person's account and that Canadian person pulled the money out. So I thought if worst case scenario, I could try to find someone that I can do that with. But it, it was, it was, and then I went back, when I got back to America, I went into SunTrust and I closed my account. And I said, I will never bank with you guys again. And I told the woman at SunTrust what had happened. I showed her all the emails. The woman at SunTrust that was helping me started crying, reading my emails because she felt so bad for me because she realized at that moment that I could have been killed without having money in India and no way to get to even to get to Bangalore to get to, which is four hours away to get the American embassy that SunTrust had put my life in danger at that point and they were not willing to help me and I had to, I had taken the precautions beforehand it was in my file to let them know that I wasn't going to be I was going to be there that was going to be me using my cards she cried at the desk and she closed my account she gave me all my cash back and she was like I am so sorry I, she goes, I'm going to send this to my higher ups. This was, this is inexcusable what happened to you. So I told Stephanie, I was like, it was funny because kind of the same thing happened to me that happened to you. And it's terrifying. It's terrifying in that moment, but there's always, and that's what's happening. So that's what Sri Swami Satyananda always says in the Yoga Sutras. When things come up and we feed into fear, which is something I do all the time because I have horrible anxiety issues. That's when we're not aligned with God is when we have anxiety, we have fear when that we've, we've now, tr we now stop trusting God. That's what's happening. And that, and when you can observe that as, Oh, I'm, I'm pulling away from God. Then hopefully you can start to observe that because it worked out for me and it worked out for you. God didn't abandon. God just wanted us to see where we really were emotionally. Oh, yeah. And I was in a full blown rage. So, <laughs> yeah. And now you have that experience. And now you can learn from that experience. And I told you last night, there's going to come a day, five years from now, 10 years from now, where somebody's going to be in your shoes and you're going to be talking them off the ledge and being like, same thing happened to me. It's going to be okay. You know, that's the thing we've talked about with Emmy, too. It's like when you start the spiritual path, Usually your life starts to fall apart as well. Oh, yeah. Well, I was on the phone with, with David last night as he's trying to walk me through figuring out my account situation because I'm terrible with anything to do with the computer. And I was so frantic, I couldn't even, like, focus. And I needed so much information to send over. And, and I won't go into what happened. You know what happened. But... um. I was in full blown panic and um, calmly talking to me. And I'm like, you wouldn't understand. My whole life is falling apart. I'm even losing you too. Like, <laughs> it's like, cause literally in the last two years, it's like God has totally just shed everything. Like if it's not aligned with me raising my vibration, it's coming off. Yeah. It's coming off layer of clothing or it's it's peeling the onion and literally my life is completely different than it was two years ago you know it's and you have you have those moments of pity party you do not gonna lie I'm, I'm human so it happens I guess that's what makes us human and um you just gotta breathe through it, I guess. And yeah. um, this too that's, shall pass. This too shall pass. Yeah. And that's, uh, it's so funny because I text you. I go, you guys know I go to bed super early. 
And I woke up at like 1130 last night, woke up, something told me to check my phone. I checked my phone and I saw all Stephanie's text messages. So I got up and went into the bedroom and we worked it. We, I helped you work it out. And then finally you go, why are you up? And I said, I woke up and something told me to check my, te my text messages. So you see the power of the consciousness of God, because that's all God really is, right? God's a consciousness. It's a, it's a consciousness everywhere that's always working. It's always, and believe it or not, the universe is always conspiring in your favor, even though it doesn't feel like it at times. It's conspiring in your favor because these layers have to be shed. It's like the snake shedding off its skin. And, and Stephanie, you having I me mean, this time last year, you were still kind of halfway pro still programmed in the church. And look at how much you've shed that off. It's a whole different belief system that you, you've had to adapt. And even though this belief system from the yoga world is more aligned with the actual teachings of Yahshua, it's still hard to change a mental programming. Because you realize yeah. it's not even about Yahshua. It's about you and your programming. If I was in a situation like this a year ago, I'd be praying in Jesus' name. And it's like, so what do I do now? And I heard a voice say, you tell God what you need. Yeah. And don't don't ask, don't hope, don't pray for it. You say, I need this now. Yeah. And what happened? And, what the hell? Ancient, the Weather Channel, I just got a notification. Ancient Egyptian secrets from Isis and Osiris. What the And we're talking about the Egyptian mystery school. That's a god wink. <laughs> Why is that coming from the Weather Channel? <laughs> like, what the hell? Actually, I'm going to say, I've been saying this since we've been really realizing how scammy the news is. I'm like, when we were kids, we always thought the weather guy was like a liar, the meteorologist. Like, they say this is happening, but never happened. And now I'm like, the meteorologist is the most honest of them all at this point. So, um, but yeah, so Stephanie, you made, you, you told God, I was asleep during this time. You told God what you needed. And then what happened before 1 a.m.? I got what I needed. Literally. So, and by just pure miracle, really. And, and it's funny because when I told David what happened, he goes, why, isn't, why doesn't that happen to me? And I said, because you put fear over faith. Yeah. And you're, he's not on the initiate's path. No. If he was exercising and doing the shadow work and really on purpose, I say that in my yoga classes, don't I, Stephanie? Like you're here on, especially in the really hard postures. I remind students when they're in it, you're here on purpose. You came here on purpose. So own it. Own how hard this is. You're here on purpose. That's powerful. That is a powerful statement to make. So yeah. when you're in that hard, dark night of the soul, you're there on purpose. Yeah. You can't, and, and that's the thing, like we, I think we still sometimes have this delusion that when it comes to spirituality, we're going to start doing it. And then like this unicorn is going to come down with like gold, farting gold out. And like all of a sudden everything's going to make sense. And in <laughs> reality, like you are the gold farting unicorn. You just have to figure it out. You have to go through, you have to go through all of the deconstruction of the ego, the false sense to realize that. And that's painful. It's, you know, have you ever, you've broken a bone, haven't you, Stephanie? You've broken. I broke my middle finger in middle school playing basketball. <laughs> <laughs> so I kept flipping everybody the bird unintentionally with a big cast on my finger. I would have <laughs> loved that. I would have loved that. <laughs> Well, the funny part is I have such tiny fingers that my friends would go, like, if I flip them the bird, they go, what are you doing? I can't even see it. There's nothing there because I have such tiny fingers. And I'm like, what about now? Because <laughs> as I have this giant roll on my freaking finger. Um, yeah, I, it's still cr it, it's still crooked. Um, I, you know, when you jam your, your hand playing basketball, and I was very competitive in sports growing up. Like, I, I, was, very, I was competitive. Um, even if it was simply gym class. Um, a lot of the girls did not like me because of that, but oops. Um, <laughs> but, and then I, and then I think I broke other bones that never really got like diagnosed because it was such like a, a, a minimal fracture. I have pretty strong bones for the most part, but I know I broke my coccyx bone, you know, the tailbone um, while ice skating. I fell on my ass <laughs> and uh, I broke, uh, I believe I fractured something in my ankle while surfing. But other than that, no. 
Well, let's think about that. When the bones break, I've bro- bro- broken a couple of bones. It's very painful for a bone to break. But what happens is after that, you go through the pain of the bone breaking, it heals and it gets stronger. So that's yeah. what's happening to you. You are breaking the... Oh, I and I feel very broken. <laughs> and it's going to build back yourself stronger. And um, it's like I was telling you last night when I broke my sacrum. I'll tell you guys. So when I broke my sacrum, I was practicing in Ohio with a teacher that I will not name who is a raging narcissist. And there is a... I had driven up to Ohio. I had just gotten back from India. And there's a rule we have in Ashtanga Yoga that after the day after travel, you do primary series. If you're working in second or third series, you only do primary series to, to reground your body. And I got to his shala in Ohio to practice with him. And he said he, he wanted me the very next day to just go straight into second series. And I said, no, I drove 10 hours. Like, I need to do primary. We kind of got into, like, a little standoff over it. And I was like, no, my body needs to be regrounded. So we finally, like, gave in and let me do primary series. And I was in Supta Kramasana, which is like one of the middle postures of primary series. It's with both of your legs are behind your back and your arms are bound and your head head's on the floor. So you're laying on your floor with, the head, with your legs behind your back. So you're pretzel. Yeah. Well, I was in the posture. My friend Chris had driven down and he was from Canada. He was practicing beside me. And this teacher came by and did an adjustment on me. That's not supposed to be done. It's an illegal adjustment. It's um, a very dangerous adjustment. And I didn't need the adjustment. I did not. I was in it fine. I did not need the adjustment. He sat on my back. So this teacher is like six foot four, a lot bigger than me. He sat on my back and he grabbed my feet and pulled my feet back. Now, when we adjust, like when I adjust a student in this, I stand by their head and lift their feet up and let their head drop. That's my, but that's not putting any pressure on the back. The back is supposed to be curved. It's like a, it's a turtle pose. So it's like you're like curved with your legs. Well, he, cause he sat on me, it popped my spine in the other direction and pulled my legs back. My sacrum went pow. It was so loud when it actually broke. My Chris beside me like jumped up, like looked at me. He did not, the teacher did not get off of me. He stayed on me while he was doing this. And then he like let, and I continued practicing. I just continued practicing. Chris was looking at me. I think my mind just went into shock. I didn't notice how much pain I was in until I got to drop back stand up. I was doing my back bends and I stood up and I went to drop back. And that's when I realized, because drop back stand stand up is relatively easy for me now. It's not, and I, but that's when I realized something was wrong. Something was really wrong. And I got in the car and I drove back to the hotel. I was sharing a room with my friend Chris. And I got on the floor of the hotel and started sobbing. Like I could not get into the bed. My Sagram was in so much pain. He's a Reiki practitioner too. He did some work for, I don't know how I did it. I practiced the whole week there with a broken sacrum, went through second series, all that stuff. Did not realize I had a broken sacrum until I drove back to Atlanta and went to the doctor. And after I realized I went through a breakdown, an emotional breakdown, because all of a sudden my body started to respond to the break. Everything got tighter Everything got was swollen. I never stopped practicing, though. I, I'm poor Todd. I would come into AYA, and Todd would just kind of tell him, like, he would do little adjustments, but he'd be like, you can't do second series right now. You can barely do primary. But I would come in every morning, and I would do something. I would do at least some of primary series. But I was having a really hard time. Of course, at this point, I'm in my mid-30s, so I'm not young anymore. And I'm having a really hard time. I'm emotionally having, I'm pissed off at this teacher for doing this to me. I found out later that he was mad because he wanted me to move to Ohio to be his mistress. I didn't know that at the time. He's a married man. I don't fuck around with that. I found that out later. And so he was taking his aggression out on me because I, he's a narcissist. He's a total narcissist. Anyway. So I was upset about that, that they hit that, you know, how dare he, he's got three fucking kids. Like what, you know, like, no. Um, and I wasn't attracted to him anyway. So like, even if he was single, I wouldn't, have, I wasn't attracted to him. Um, but over time I would be ca- calling my friend Chris and like crying to him on the phone about, you know, losing my practice, basically like losing everything because of this douchebag. And Chris was like, you know, I think your body's so used to the yoga now that you're going to have to start incorporating other things into it to kind of get your body to renew some strength. And that's when he told me to start doing bar. And this is when bar was really new. 
And so I kind of knew what it was, but I never done it before. I went to a few classes here in Atlanta, but I didn't really jive with it because even with the broken sac sacrum at that point, my level of fitness was, was still higher than most of the people in the class, just because of everything I put my body through over the last, you know, in India and all that kind of stuff. So I, I kind of dropped it for a little while. And that's when one day I was um, just looking on YouTube and I saw Marnie Alton's videos and I started doing her videos and doing her videos changed me and got my sacrum to a place where it is so much stronger. My core now is stronger than it's ever been. And I'm pushing 40. And it's because, so I look back now at that time in my life of when that break happened and how detrimental that was to me mentally, emotionally. My One of my trips to India, I was there with a broken sacrum. But everything that came as a result of that changed my life and made me stronger. And so I'm, I'm happy that happened now. Let me shut the door. Hold on one second. So I'm happy. I'm actually happy that happened. I'm actually grateful to that son of a bitch who did that to me. And I hope his wife has left him by now because girl, you deserve so much better than that asshole. But, um, but you know, um, I'm actually grateful it happened to me because if I had not gone through I mean, it was like a couple of years of rehabilitation. I would not be where I am now with my body. And that my, my body would not be as strong as it is now. And so I, what I could have done is I could have just quit everything. Because I had a broken state and been lazy, laid on the sofa. Just quit everything. But I didn't. Even though life was so depressing for me and everything was so frustrating, I still got up every morning. I still went to the shala. I started doing the bar. And everything, and that's how I found Marnie Alton, which we love a Marnie Alton, don't we? <laughs> sure do. She's what I, so I, I'm, I feel grateful. And I noticed too, I was actually studying some of her classes. And I, I said this on the voice message to our group today about the flushing between sides. And you know how in Ashtanga we flush between sides? She does that too in her, her practices as well. Yeah, I noticed it. I noticed. too Between sides. That's super important. So how do you for a yoga background, perhaps? Even I think she studied some of the yoga stuff she does do is not um, traditional, but I think what she's done is she studied energetic body. Yeah. And that's, and so you're just going to, you're going to understand that there's two different karmas. And so she's flushing as well. And I'm just so grateful. So because of that asshole, what the devil will make for bad God will use for good because that asshole broke my sacrum. I found Marnie Alton and my body got super strong. So you have a choice, though. It's kind of like we were saying with the Brian Weiss stuff where you can work on your karma now and have a great next life or not work on it and have a shitty. I had a choice to make in that moment. We're at these this crossroads where I am either going to just give in to a broken sacrum and have a woe is me and not do anything and just I'm going to be the victim. Or I'm going to have many little, many, many tiny pity parties every day, but still get up and do the work. And because I still got up and I did the work, another pathway of, of, of education and learning opened for me. And so that's what, and that's why I keep telling you, Stephanie, you're at these little crossroads. Mm -hmm. God's like, what you going to do? Which, which path are you going to take? Even the I, I Ching, I won't say what the I Ching said, but what the I Ching was pretty much like, you're on the path. Yep. Fine. Buckle up, buttercup. God help me. The I Ching is another form of divination, guys. That's what the I Ching, if you know what the I Ching is. That's another form of divination coming from Confucius. It speaks in metaphors, but it pretty much was very clear with, with Stephanie. It was like, listen, you're walking a razor's edge right now, but it's necessary for the initiate. It's the initiate's path. I mean, even I was reading even the Gnostics, Christians, the original Christian faith, um, they had a very extensive initiation process, and the beginning stages lasted about five years. And... um a lot of people quit because they wanted instantaneous. They couldn't handle the five year of ruling work before they were brought into deeper teachings. But you can't have deeper teachings until you've shattered the programming of the lower. Yeah, that would make sense because, I mean, if you were to go into the, the deeper, deeper te uh, teachings and the ego still has not died its death, forget it. Then you're turning into an asshole. Yeah. Well, that's what the dark cult did. 
So a lot of the teachings, it's like I was talking to Tamara off off camera and we were talking about Nexium that that a lot of what Keith Ranieri is teaching or was teaching does come from legitimate um, teachings about the self. But what he did, because he's a psychopath and he's now rotting in prison, what he did is he twisted it and he used it to manipulate. And so a lot of these poor victims had not had the appropriate prior teachings to see where the manipulation was. And so that's what the, that's why we keep keep saying we can't throw everything out. We can't throw the baby we, we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater because the dark cult is using the the controllers are using the exact same thing that life workers use. They're just using it for narcissistic, psychopathic, manipulative purposes. Whereas we're using it to strengthen the individual soul. It's like in the Gnostic teaching, Joshua says, "You want to know God, then know yourself, meaning the soul, not the ego." The where the church do completely the opposite of that because god where does god live in our in our in our cells and our soul in, in our body really the spark of life um the recording i did today which will be released in a couple of weeks it talked about went through the gospel of the holy 12 again in the sophia book where we talked a lot about animals and we know in the gospel of the holy 12 yashua was very clear you don't abuse animals you don't eat animals are they, do they not have soul? Are they not the same divine spark of light you are? They just chose to incarnate as an animal for whatever lessons that their soul wanted to learn. Partially, I would probably not mind incarnating as like, I don't know, a dog. My dog's over here just chilling. She's just chilling. My, my friend Harmony Slater, who is a Canadian, she's one of the 17 women who are certified she's quite a badass she loves Robbie so before the pandemic she would come down and teach a couple of times a year as like a guest teacher and she loves Ro my dog Robbie which Stephanie has met Robbie and she always laughs because Ravi Ravi was a, from he's from India um, my friend Denise we had already left my friend Denise he wandered into the shala basically as a puppy and my friend Denise picked him up and took him home and then we she looked ended up we ended up with him well uh, Ravi if if we fuck around on the yoga mats and don't do our traditional practice, Ravi gets very upset. He'll bark at you. Woo, 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 like he barks at you. But if you do your traditional practice, he lays down and goes to sleep on his bed. So we always laugh that it's Guruji, that Guruji reincarnated as Ravi. And Harmony laughs. She goes, well, what isn't that something? <laughs> Guruji was adored by his Western students. Guruji is the, the person who changed, who really gave the information to the Western students that they brought back to the West. Like my teacher, David Grieg, Todd, you know, and I have Sharat, his grandson is my teacher because he's passed away. And I'm like, isn't that funny? Guruji and Todd had a very close relationship. So she goes, I give a lot of credence to the idea that Ravi is Guruji and that how karmic is that? He came back as a dog who was adopted by Westerners who spoil the shit out of him now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Personally, I might want to incarnate back as a dolphin because I love to swim. And I just, I love how they can swim so fast and jump. And like, to me, it's like a fun life besides maybe like trying to defend themselves from like sharks and stuff like that. But I don't know. That's where my mind takes me. I mean, we, we're like, Robbie's on the perpetual retirement plan. We tried a, for, a, there was a hot second there. We gave him a job where he would go into the shala sometimes. Because a lot of dogs that are adopted from India will end up being shala dogs. Like they'll go, on, go in with their human while their human teaches and they'll like lay on the bed and sleep. And But Robbie, Robbie flirted too much with the girls. He wouldn't stay in his bed. He would come. We have a picture of him. One of the one of the female students he loved was in her closing. And Ravi's literally leaning up against her back, giving her like puppy dog eyes. And so, he, so Todd Aww. fired him. He got fired. Oh, and I'm just going to say something about Ravi. There is no way his soul is a two dimensional soul. There's like no way he's way. Well, same thing for my Abby. Okay way too intelligent so the thing about ravi is um he argues with todd all the time they literally will argue with each other they have a full-blown argument where todd will tell him don't do that and he rawr, 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 like and he looks at todd with this like 
this this rebellious teenager look in his face. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And he'll be like, No, you don't do that. Don't talk back to me, Robbie. Row. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. And he's very protective. He will not let any anybody hug me sometimes. Like if people go to hug me in front of him, he gets very upset. I'm when we first rest, when we first got him in, we had to work with a trainer because he's half wild. And so we had to learn how to work with him. And basically he sees me as his puppy. Like he's the co-alpha and I'm his puppy. So he is responsible for me. That's how, that's how he sees me. And I don't know how to change that. I don't know how to like make that different. Oh, my God. He sees me. That's our trainer. Like he sees you as, as his puppy. He's, you are his, because he used to, before we had him on, we had, he's on Catherine Edwards diet plan now, which has changed his life. But before he was, so now he doesn't share any of his food because he loves his food so much, but he would always bring me his food. Like every time he got kibbles, he would always bring me kibbles at my feet. Aww. So, but then he always expects me to give him my food too, but <laughs> waiting to happen. So, um, yeah, but he's, but he's, I mean, that's just the guy as I brought Ravi up, that's the, re I mean, literally that would be the karmic because Guruji gave his life to helping people achieve some sort of understanding, transmuting some sort of understanding as to who they were. And so of course this life, he gets to come back as a very spoiled, don't mistaken, very spoiled. Have, I will continue spoiling him for the rest of my life because he is the love of my life. Ravi is the love of my life. Very spoiled dog, little boy very spoiled yeah he this is his house this is his life we're just a part of it i call him because we i live in midtown so i call him the maharaja of midtown because the maharaja is like the prince of india the maharaja he's the maharaja of midtown so um so yeah all right guys i know it's getting close to and you've got some stuff you got to do today stephanie so let us know down in the comment section below um if things are coming up, obstacles are appearing for you guys in the, in the challenge, just know that this is part of it. And it's okay. It's okay to cry. It's okay to get pissed. But then pick yourself back up again. I know I told Stephanie, go do some kickboxing to get that anger and aggression. Now, I'm actually about to go kickbox again in a minute. So just to just to just. I actually like cardio kickboxing. I, I shouldn't be doing as much of it. I did it a couple of days ago, but I'm going to do it again because I'm PMSing and so things are agitating me. So I'm going to go channel that through kickboxing. Maybe that's why I'm also has struggling. I'm, I'm on the verge of that myself right now. Yeah, I'm like a week out. And I'm like, oh, my boobs were a little sore this morning. I was like, oh, okay. That's what's happening. <laughs> again, sorry for the TMI, everyone. So... Hey, it happens, man. When you are PMSing, your boobs get sore. It's just, it is what it is. They get sore. They get sore. If you ever date me, I will probably ask you to m massage my boobs at some point in the relationship in this time. Nothing sexy, just like I, they're, they hurt. <laughs> Can you massage them for me? They really hurt. <laughs> so they hurt, man. They hurt. <laughs> well, on that note, I have a course I have to go teach soon and uh yeah all right guys we love you all let us know how you're doing down in the comment section below um check out stephanie's courses i'll put all the information down in the description box once again if you need help financially to do a course just contact stephanie uh privately and work that with her and if you want to buy something for a, a christmas gift or birthday gift or hanukkah gift or if you just want to buy someone a gift <laughs> contact Stephanie and you can work that out with her too. So, all right guys, we love you and we'll talk to you soon. Bye everybody. Bye.